Good morning, and welcome to your daily Farm and Home Show, brought to you by the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service. And now, here's your host. Good morning, and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles, and this morning we're visiting with Brandon Bell. He's the Metcalf County Extension Agent for Agriculture and Natural Resources. Good morning, Brandon. Good morning. Brandon, we've kind of been covering the gamut about hay this week, and today we're going to talk a little bit about moisture. And moisture is one of those things that can determine quality, you know, how long the hay will, will stay in a nutritious form. There's all kinds of things that moisture pl kind of plays a role right. in. And it may seem a little bit early, you know, right now we're worried about finding enough hay to, to feed our herd or whatever, but it won't be long until uh, spring will be here and we'll be in a hurry to get our hay put up. And uh, the moisture level that we take that hay up at and bale it at is very critical. Mm -hmm. And you've already mentioned several of the reasons, but, you know, storage uh, is the main thing because we're not going to feed our hay immediately. We're going to store it in some form or fashion. Therefore, we need to know uh, approximately what our moisture is. Um, sometimes we try to guess at it, but I've got some testing equipment here that uh, will uh, give us a, an exact idea of how much moisture is in our hay. Um, this is a uh, high moisture tester. Okay. Now you can test dry hay with it, but a lot of us will put up baleage. Um, so this is very handy because it's really hard to tell when we're shooting for 40 to 60 percent moisture in baleage. It's hard to guess at that. So uh, I got this tool to loan out to producers in Maycalf County and this is actually called a uh, windrow tester. So you gather hay from the windrow, put it down in a five gallon bucket, and we've got some specific instructions on how you do it. But um, then when you get it down in the bucket, you put this down in the five gallon bucket and it tells you your moisture. Uh, for a long time, we relied on these type of testers, but it says on here, uh, most accurate under 30%. So how accurate are we gonna be on baleage if we're trying to get, you know, ideally at 50% moisture? So mm -hmm. this one we use um, for dry hay and we uh, test for moist moisture levels in large squares, small squares, and in dry rolls of hay to see um, if it is gonna keep. Now, the, what I like about this is it's e you can test prior to putting it in the roll. Mm -hmm. This one, you can wad some hay up and get it around the sensor and get a pretty good idea, but it's not near as accurate as this. Now, what I run into a lot is when people, w they wonder what their moisture is after they roll it. Are they thinking, will it keep or will it not keep? Well, when you stick this probe in a roll that has been setting for a day or so, what are we measuring when we stick this in that hay? We're measuring sweat a lot of times because even if it is put up at the proper moisture level, um, and like on a large roll, that will be 15 to 18% moisture. We can put it up at 15 to 18% moisture, put it in the roll, let it set for a day or two and let it sweat and we may go back and this thing may read 30 percent moisture mm -hmm. because it is reading that sweat so that is what i really like about being able to test it before you roll it or before you bale it absolutely because brandon we have a lot of these hay structures hay storage structures that we've built through the ag development funds and those right. sorts of things but moisture as far as fires hazardous right um if and we're going to store it moisture and hey, it leads to heat. Mm -hmm. And we need to be very, very careful uh, about rolling hay, going out, and just sticking it in the barn. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't recommend that you immediately stick it in the barn. And people say, well, it's gonna get wet by the time I let it go through its heat. I would rather, if you've ever seen a hay fire, believe me, you would rather your hay get a little bit wet and set out until it completely goes through its heat and comes back down. Um, and I have a, uh, a heat chart that I printed off this morning, um, and 130 degrees seems really hot, but there's no problem at 130 degrees. Uh, between 130 and 140, there's no problem yet, but it may go up, recheck it in a few hours. 150, more than likely, it's gonna get even hotter, and at that time, we need to have good air circulation and, and cooling and monitor often. Now, when we get to 175 to 190, fire is imminent and may be a short distance from our probe. 200 or above, it's there. 
And I have seen situations where the guy barely got it out of the barn. We had the fire department sitting there and he barely got it out of the barn before it went. Yeah, good things to know. Appreciate you bringing that to our attention. And if you have questions, make sure to contact us at the Extension Office. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Good morning and welcome to your daily farm and home show brought to you by the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service. And now, here's your host.